Hello, Maverick Traders. Welcome out to your Market Roundup, December 11th. Corey here with you. Nice to see all of you. Let's get to it. As always, we're going to talk about meaningful news, what's moving in the markets. Um, commodities have certainly been an area of interest. Two roads diverge. Oil went down. Uh, gold went up. And we're seeing a little bit of a turn or stabilization in oil, potentially. We'll talk about that. Uh, what markets are moving, where they're moving, S&P 500, new 52-week highs today, pretty cool stuff. And then we'll highlight some bullish, bearish ideas, our best ideas list. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70-80% to 80 of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. All right. So an interesting day today. Uh, markets didn't explode or anything like that. You can see across the board up just under half a percent in everything. Gold was the outperformer or underperformer down 1%. But What's interesting about today is that the S&P 500 made new 52-week highs. That is a breaking to new highs is significant. People say, well, is it a good idea to buy new 52-week highs? No, it's a great idea. Generally speaking, when you make new 52-week highs, you proceed to make new 52-week highs again and again in the short term. So if this thing has broken out, there's probably more to go. And then also on the news... Wells Fargo was found, and other big banks, found to have mortgage discrimination, statistically significant disparities in those numbers, and obviously in terms of big banks, they just cannot get out of the way of regulators. They are continually finding their way into the headlines for wrongdoings, just not great for that sector. Advanced decline line, 53% decliners, 50 uh, 43% decliners, pardon me, 52% advancers. So again, slightly positive. And the 50 MA still strong, three-fourths of all stocks above their 50 MA. So as we look at these charts, again, the S&P has been in a consolidation. It has rested here, not really gone anywhere, but we're just starting to break out of that range. So a high base pattern here and a breakout to the upside. Uh, today was the new 52-week high, the kind of clearing of that zone. Some technical traders do not believe it's a true breakout unless you finish on the weekly candle. So you'd have to finish Friday at new 52-week highs. Uh, by Friday, you might be you know, 40, 50 points higher, but ultimately a nice breakout to the upside and certainly bullish overall. QQQ, same thing. We had a little bit of a correction and now piercing to new highs. So not much of a pause. And I think this speaks to the markets. Although we had we were up year to date in October, the markets had swooned and people just got negative. They got too negative for the seasonality. There's a lot of reasons to buy into year end. And especially when the market's up, and you start to see that it's like a, we talked about it at the time. All it needs is a little spark and then it ignites. And sure enough, where we talked about that the the old you buy around October 31st as Halloween comes to an end. And that's usually where there's an end of year chase. Well, this year has played out perfectly. So it, the spark was was really there and away it went. And we're still seeing that. So we're chasing performance to the upside. Does a lot of this make sense fundamentally? Maybe not. But understand that your performance is dictated based on what markets are doing, not what you think they should be doing, right? We get P&L, profit and loss, based on what we're in, not where the markets theoretically should be going. So very important uh, this is where trend trading and technical analysis and some of those things and understanding of it can help you. As we look at today, what really stands out is that everything is green. Almost everything is green except for large cap NASDAQ. 
Amazon, Tesla down one. Google and Meta down one to two. NVIDIA, Apple, Microsoft, all of the biggest companies in the red. All the little small boxes, you know, less significant, impactful, uh, more in the green. So Eli Lilly, we talked about this. This had really good drug news a couple of weeks ago, and it's gone down since. We, we touched on that market tell on the day when some quote-unquote good news came out, and yet the stock traded down. Probably a market tell. It's been underperforming since. But that large cap NASDAQ area certainly underperformed today uh, in the markets. Now, what's difficult is to find the bearish candidates. We know we're breaking to new 52-week highs. So my bearish candidates are going to be a little abnormal today. Um, the question of, do I want to keep shorting energy? I've been hammering the energy sector for weeks now. And that it's paid off. The energy sectors kept spiraling lower, right? The trend. I even had XLE in here last week. The, the entire sector just shorted all. But this week, I don't have any shorts in the energy sector. Now, that's still the bearish area. But my thought is, is that there's probably a little bit of a mean reversion in here. So uh, I don't know that it's the bottom, but I've just... I'm inclined to look elsewhere on the bearish side. So let's look at a few names. First, Freeport McMoran. Notice the bearish to bullish reversal here. Okay, we were trending lower. Now we're starting to turn up. Notice the moving average crossover and the upward slope. Notice the advance on higher volume and then pull back on declining volumes. And we start to advance again and the volume picks up all characteristics of a more bullish reversal. I think Freeport can work its way higher. I wouldn't be too bullish here, but maybe a bull call spread, you know, something along those lines. If we think about a bull call spread, you've got your profit and loss risk graph. You got your break evens in here. You got lower prices like 37, 38, 39, 40, you know, as your price points and maybe building a little bull call spread where you make money as it works its way higher and maybe your profit potential up here is two times what your risk is or something along those lines maybe your profit you know stops at 39 3950 something like that um, or forty dollars per share but something in that neighborhood of a you know bull call spread it always looks like that little uh, pattern and I think that type of risk graph would make sense. Wendy's also on the bullish list. I'm looking at this as a little bit of a catch-up trade. Same type of concept. Notice how we've pulled back to the moving averages and could just start to turn up. Notice the higher volume on the way up, lighter volumes on the pullback. I think Wendy's, same thing. Bull call spread. You'll get this type of risk graph. Maybe your target price up here is $20 per share. And you maybe get that break-even point in here where your risk is one and your reward is two, something in that vein. And it might not be quite that good of a reward-to-risk ratio, but something along those lines. Now, on the bearish side, I said that I'm going to mix it up a little bit. And if I look at this chart of Disney, you just from a glance, you'd say, well, it's bullish. Well, maybe so, but... The last couple of weeks, the market's been going higher and Disney fell and it made a leg lower. Okay, I think that's an A. We've bounced up, but we're in danger of setting a lower high. That would be the B. And one more leg to the downside, getting us down here towards the 50 MA, would be the ABC correction. The one, two, three type of move and probably back to where this gapped up. That $87, $88 range. So in this case, maybe some sort of bearish spread, right? Here's our risk graph, profit loss, break even, prices going lower down here, prices higher up here, and some sort of bear put, bear call spread, something where we're making money as the stock goes down, we would be losing money if the stock goes up would be the idea, right? And maybe it's a, a risk graph. I mean, the numbers might not perfectly work with the way that I've drawn it, but it might be something like, um, 
I don't know, maybe a 92-87 bear put spread, or maybe even a 92-87-82 put butterfly, or something along those lines where we're basically targeting a move down here with $87 per share, That right about that range being the downside target. And last but not least, Pepsi, again, an underperformer. Now, this is a case where the stock is just in a tight basing pattern. Realistically, this chart could go either way, but the idea is we've gone through a volatility compression, a period where volatility is stagnant, people get bored, the options go down in value, and this is an opportunity to play it. And really, we don't have to guess. It could break up, it could break down. We can simply wait for the break and see which way it goes. Um, it might very well might consolidate for a little while longer, right? So we, we could wait for the break, or if you feel like it's on the cusp, and it's just right on the cusp of breaking out, this is where you could do some sort of straddle or strangle type of trade. And in that type of trade, you've got a risk graph that would look like this, where if you get a big move, you know, if it stays here at 167, you're in trouble. But as the stock goes higher or as the stock goes lower, you know, we make a nice big profit. So that would be a long straddle. A long strangle would look very similar. It would just have a flatter bottom, but still that unlimited upside potential. So the idea here, again, is more of a volatility trade. My guess is we came down and now we're consolidating. My guess is we will leave on the downside when this thing's all said and done. But some sort of long volatility trade, I would be leaning more bearish, uh, but we can wait for the break if you want to do so. Market seasonality is still bullish, and this is just simply a case where people have just overestimated the bearishness and underestimated the opportunity. Wednesday, we get the Fed meeting. The Fed is not expected to do anything as far as rates are concerned, but you always have to be aware of their messaging, whether they give any insights into future rate hikes, future rate cuts, anything that can change the narrative. Earnings season winding down, but we've got Adobe, BHP, Costco, uh, JCI, Lennar, Oracle, some other companies reporting there that can be movers. Thanks everyone for joining us. Have a great week ahead. We'll see you next time.